Hey guys, Ross Gilmore here from Wood Tracker. In this video I want to go over my backpacking and bushcraft gear with you. Now I know that most people tend to subdivide their gear into warm weather or three season and then winter gear. I don't really do that. I like to keep my gear consistent year round so I know exactly what I'm using. I know exactly what I'm supposed to have in my backpack. Of course there are pieces that vary depending on temperature and I will point them out to you as I go through uh, my equipment. Now the gear that I have here that you will see is intended to function from anywhere from an overnight trip to an extended stay in the woods. Of course the only variable being the amount of food I can procure or carry with me. And what you will see is the core of my gear. This is what comes with me every time and on a regular backpacking or bushcraft trip is all I would have with me. Aside from this I have more mission specific gear uh, for example, if I'm snowshoeing, obviously I'll have snowshoes with me. If I'm climbing, I'll have a harness, rope, ice tools, rack, etc. Uh, if I'm hunting, I'll have my hunting equipment with me. Same thing if I'm fishing, I'll have fishing gear that gets added onto this core kit. But this is my primary uh, backpacking and bushcraft gear. So that's what I will go over with you at this point. So all that being said, let's get started with the gear. First thing, of course, is the backpack. This is the REI Flash 62. It's a 62 liter internal frame pack. Uh, the frame extends into the hip belt, so it provides pretty good weight transfer. It's on the lighter side. It comes in at exactly three pounds, which is not bad for an internal frame backpack. Now, a lot of the 62 liter volume is contained in this floating front pocket and the top lid pocket so the main compartment is about 45 to 50 liters but I find that it's enough for uh, my three season and my winter gear as well. I do have a larger pack which is the Gregory Palace 880 which I use if I'm big game hunting and I expect to have to carry out a lot of weight. Uh, it has a much more robust frame that can handle a lot more weight uh, but for 99% of the trips this is more than enough and this is what I carry with me. On the outside, there are a couple of things. First is my trekking poles. These are the Black Diamond uh, Alpine Carbon Cork. They weigh exactly 16 ounces. Uh, I've switched to using them recently. I, I like them very much. I also use them to set up my shelter. So they're also part of my uh, tent system. Uh, so it actually functions pretty well in terms of weight. It offsets the center pole that I would have had to carry otherwise for my shelter. Uh, they've been serving me pretty well, so I'm happy with them. Again, 16 ounces. In the front here, I have stuffed a piece of closed cell phone pad that I've just cut out that I use as a seat. Comes in handy. It's useful to put food on, things like that when you're out in the snow. It comes in, and I have the weights written down here, that's what I'm looking at. It's 1.6 ounces for the pad. Now we move into the inside of the pack. Now usually, the top of my pack, the top, I would say third, if we're speaking about gear, tends to stay empty. The reason for that is because you're usually carrying things in your pack other than your primary gear. Things such as clothing. For example, in winter right now, I would have with me a big fluffy jacket like this one. This is the Patagonia Dead Air Space Parker. It's a fluffy jacket. I need room to fit it in the backpack for when I am moving around. If I'm walking during the day or I'm working, I'm not going to wear this jacket. So it needs to find room in my pack. That's why I need the extra space. I also need extra space for things like food. This here is my food bag. This is food for about two days so for a weekend trip this food will do just fine at 2,000 calories per day. Keep in mind food is heavy and food is bulky even if you're using completely dehydrated lightweight food it still adds up if we're talking about 2,000 calories per day even with highly caloric dense food it's about a pound and a half per day of food it adds up fast so if you're out for a week or two weeks and you need to carry that food with you that requires a lot of space and you need to keep that in mind when selecting a pack. That's why the top of my pack tends to be empty because that's what usually fills it up. Or 
things like water. If you're going to be traveling over a mountain, you're not sure if you'll be able to find water sources, you may have to carry a good amount with you. This is a collapsible two liter Nalgene bottle. It's actually rated as a 48 ounce bottle, but the 48 ounce mark is here. So the full bottle is about two liters. The bottle itself weighs 2.2 ounces when empty. I always have this one with me. I like the wide mouth version because it takes longer to freeze up. So you can use the water longer before it has to freeze. I also have my Nalgene bottle. It's a regular Lexan Nalgene bottle. It is 6.2 ounces. And I have a stoic titanium 750 milliliter cup, which weighs three ounces. This is my primary water bottle. I like having a solid one, so I know I can rely on it and it's not going to crack on me. I avoid metal water bottles because they really tend to freeze onto your hand and onto your lips when you try to drink from them in cold weather. I mean, when it's minus 10 out Fahrenheit, uh, below minus 20 Celsius, you touch that to your lips, it's going to stick to them. You are going to have to peel it off from your hand if you're using a metal bottle, so be careful with that. I also have another Nalgene collapsible bottle, two liter bottle. It has a yellow cap because this is my pee bottle. Yeah, I find it very important during winter, but I also like to use it year round. Uh, not having to get out of your sleeping bag during the night uh, saves a lot of heat. Every time you get out, you lose all that heat you've accumulated in your sleeping bag. So it's a good idea. I never go out in winter without it. Another thing I have here in a Ziploc bag is my water filter. This is the Sawyer mini squeeze filter and I've gotten it on ever new 1.5 liter plastic bag that it screws on that I can squeeze out and filter. This is just a replacement for the standard bag that came with it. Um, the Sawyer itself, the filter weighs 1.4 ounces. Uh, the bag weighs 1.2 ounces. I also have a small pre-filter on it from an Aquamira Frontier Pro. Together everything weighs exactly 3 ounces with the Ziploc bag. Now this is not something that I bring out in winter uh, because a filter like this, if you use it and it's wet, it will freeze and get damaged. So in winter I don't carry it. If the temperature is going to drop below freezing, I leave it at home. When there's snow like this, to get water, obviously I melt snow. If it's in the shoulder seasons where it's freezing but you don't have a lot of snow yet, I use the water purification tablets I carry in my pocket kit to purify my water. Then we have my cooking kit. Uh, this weighs exactly one pound, including the weight of an empty fuel canister and I'll go over this in more detail in a bit when I can zoom in. We'll put it aside for now. Then, a Baco Laplander saw. We're all familiar with it. Together with my knife, lets me do just about everything I need to do in terms of wood processing in the wood. Uh, so I like it very much. It's relatively lightweight, so I like to keep it in my pack. In this little bag over here, I have all my other miscellaneous gear. Compass, mirror, multi-tool, rope, uh, headlamp, etc. This whole bag, if I can find it for you, weighs 12.9 ounces. This is in a C2 Summit waterproof stuff sack. Uh, but this is where I keep all of my miscellaneous gear and as you can see I have cut it down quite a bit. Uh, this is just the minimum that's required and most of the things honestly I don't use on all trips but they're all things that I like to have with me. Then we move to the major gear. Here I have my sleeping pad. This is the Thermarest Neo Air X Term. This is a four season sleeping pad. It has an R value of 5.9 as compared to one of those closed cell phone sleeping pads. Uh, they have an R value of about 2. So this is quite a bit warmer. It's actually very light. The whole pad weighs 15 ounces. So it's under a pound. 
in here I also have a little inflatable pillow it's a Kukulite pillow they don't make them anymore the manufacturer went out of business uh, but the pillow itself weighs 1.3 ounces so together this whole bag including a small repair kit on the bottom for the pad comes in at one pound 0 0.9 ounces then I have my shelter this is my tent it's the Shangri-La 3 tent it's a tarp tent it's a floorless shelter uh, but it sets up to be pretty large size so I like using it during winter I've cut it down what I'm using is just part of the shelter this tent comes with a inside nest which has a floor and mosquito netting it has a pole in the center which supports the whole tent I've removed all of those components and I just use the fly sheet that I set up with my trekking poles using a small connector piece to extend them uh, again though the shelter as I have it set up is 1.5 pounds uh, I've thought many times about switching to a freestanding shelter because this can be a hassle to set up uh, because it depends on the, all the sides being staked down pretty well but just the low weight and the large space that it provides I haven't been able to find anything that comes close to this this is a Tyvek stuff sack that I made for it and with the stuff sack and the 10 stakes and the extender piece the whole package comes to 1 pound 11.6 ounces for the shelter and the last piece I have and the piece which varies the most based on the season is my sleeping bag right now in here I have my three season sleeping bag which is just the patrol bag from the MMS system it's a synthetic bag it's really old I've had it for over 10 years uh, it's not the greatest thing out there there's much better things out right now but I have it so I keep using it it's perfectly adequate for down to 32 Fahrenheit or 0 Celsius um, I like to keep it because in the summer I have my dogs with me, they get wet, I shove them in the sleeping bag, I don't want to have to worry about getting it damaged. For the winter, down to about 0 Fahrenheit, so minus 18 Celsius, and actually this past weekend I used it down to minus 15 Fahrenheit, which I think is minus 25 Celsius if I'm not mistaken, uh, I used the Western Mountaineering Antelope MF down sleeping bag. Ironically, it compresses down to the exact same size, so that's why I'm able to use the exact same backpack. The MMS winter bag weighs 2 pounds 5.3 ounces. The Western Mountaineering zero degree down bag weighs 2 pounds 7 ounces. So as you can see, they're almost the same weight. In terms of technology, things have come a long way. Um, but again, I still like to use this for warm weather, the Western Mountaineering bag for cold weather. I do have a much warmer sleeping bag, which is the West Mountaineer, West, uh, Western Mountaineering Puma MF sleeping bag, which is a minus 25 degree Fahrenheit bag. It weighs 3 pounds 7 ounces. I very rarely use it. I mean, I cannot really think of circumstances right now where I'll have to pull it out because with my zero degree bag and all of my clothing using my parka and a hot water bottle I've been able to push the insulation of my sleeping bags pretty far down but I do have it and I wanted to mention it just in case I keep my sleeping bags into, in a C2 Summit uh, event waterproof stuff sack this is completely waterproof there's no way water is going to get in here it's pretty heavy it's 4.7 ounces for the stuff sack alone but I find that it's worth it because this is the most important piece of gear I believe I have and I like to keep it protected when I'm out and that's the entirety of my gear as far as, far as base gear is concerned and let's keep, uh, again keeping aside rifles, snowshoes, uh, fishing equipment, things like that the overall weight of what you see for my three season gear is 12 pounds 7.1 ounces for my winter gear with the changes it's 12 pounds 8.8 .8 ounces so you can see things are pretty much the same because again the main difference in equipment is just the sleeping bag that I bring and as you saw they're about the same size and about the same weight 
So this is all of the gear I have with me. Now I'm going to zoom in and show you the contents of my cook kit and the contents of the pouch in which I have all of my small pieces of gear. The cook kit is contained inside a one liter Snow Peak titanium pot. The pot itself weighs 4.7 ounces and contains the whole kit. Inside, wrapped in a bandana, I have an aluminum foil windscreen. I have a fuel canister, a mini big lighter to light the stove, and the stove itself. This is the Covea Spider remote canister stove. Uh, even though it's not a white gas stove, I use it year round and I've used it successfully. And that's because it allows for use with an inverted fuel canister. So I can turn it upside down and use it in liquid feed mode so it can function in very low temperatures. And that's it. That's the entirety of my cook kit. As I said before, it comes in at exactly one pound with everything. And it's more than I need combined with my titanium cup uh, to cook in the woods and to prepare my food. In this Sea to Summit pouch, I have the rest of my miscellaneous gear. I have, let's see, six 10 foot pieces of nylon cordage. It's uh, very strong, I use it for my shelter in case I need it in really bad weather. I have a black diamond headlamp, which uses two AAA batteries. I have a DC3 sharpening stone that I use for my knife. If I'm carrying an axe, I use it for the axe as well. A small spray bottle of 100% DEET. I have a mirror. I have a Sunto M3 compass, which I like very much. Uh, it's a bit heavier than I need, but I like using it. In a Ziploc bag, I have a toothbrush and some toilet paper. I have a Leatherman Micra multi-tool, which I find is all of the multi-tool I need, particularly for the pliers. And I have my first aid kit. This is my entire first aid kit. I have some moleskin, gauze, band-aids, and a quick cloth sponge in case I get a more serious injury. And that's it. These are all of my small miscellaneous items. I don't always use all of them on every trip, but I like to have them with me. I'm not going to go to the individual weights right now. You can go on my blog and look them up. Again, the combined weight is 12.9 ounces of this equipment and the stuff sack itself. So this is the entirety of my base gear. Again, it's about 12 and a half pounds base weight. This allows me to stay in the woods from anywhere from an overnight to an extended stay and do it quite comfortably. Uh, I'm sure I'll make changes in the future, but for now, this is the gear that I choose to carry with me. I hope it's been useful for you guys uh, to have a look through it.